Welcome everyone today to Kingdom Concepts. I'm Josh, this is my wife, Eliana, and we're so honored, amen, to have you join us today for this very special episode of Kingdom Concepts. We've been talking about new beginnings and second chances. Mm. I don't know anyone that has never needed a second chance at do-over. You know, this is such an important uh, topic because every one of us have either needed a second chance or we have to learn to extend oh, another yes. second chance yes. to somebody else. Yes. And uh, and so this is this is going to be really good. I've been enjoying this I conversation. Have I have too. Because, you know, we, we know so many people like ourselves that, you know, God knows how many chances he gave us. It was more than two. You know, to, to be able to have the opportunity for for new. Yes. That's what I love about our God. Our God is always doing things new. Mm. And not just some things. It says he makes all things mm. new. And that's what we need. Sometimes you need an extreme makeover mm. in your spiritual life, you know, to where you need God to grab you from where you are at and take you to where he wants your life to be. And uh, we're just going to go, we're going to go deep into this today, amen. So grab your Bible, amen. Grab a notebook and a pen. You're going to want to take some notes, amen. But uh, I just want to say this has been a blessing because when I think about what God has done for us, mm. you know, even our marriage. Oh my gosh. You know, when we got married, I'm just going to set the platform here. When, um, we've been talking about second chances. And, um, you know, in our last episode, you were, you know, we were mentioning over in Matthew 18, um, verse 21 and 22, where Peter was asking Jesus, said, hey, man, how often do I forgive, you mm -hmm. know, my brother who sins against me? He goes, seven times yeah. in a day? And Jesus said, no, nah. he goes, 70 times seven, you know? Wow. And it was like, uh, and he was just ex expressing to Peter, Peter, there should never be a limit mm -hmm. to how much you can forgive. And I'll tell you why there should never be mm -hmm. a limit, because love mm -hmm. has no limits. That's right. And forgiveness is attached to love. It's a decision that you're going to love uh, uh, despite what's been done, mm -hmm. you know. And so for us, because some people might be watching, they don't necessarily know our testimony. Mm -hmm. But when we got saved, our marriage was already destroyed. Mm, yes. We were getting ready to get divorced. Mm. And um, I was done with you. <laughs> done, done, done with you. <laughs> so how... Why don't you share a little bit about where we were at with this? Because um, there might be someone watching that, you know, they're in the same situation yes. where, you know what, you weren't saved, now you are. And, and, and uh, you know, a marriage you were going to let go of now, you know, you're you're trying to hold on to it. And, um, and it's important for people to know that God will always meet you. Yes, he does. Amen. Wherever you're at, whatever you're going through. And for us, here we are born again. We love God. And we're born again, but we did not love, love each, each other. other. Yes. And if you remember right, when I first got saved and you got saved, I remember coming to God and giving him my plan. Mm -hmm. I remember telling, we had a, one child at the time, and I remember coming to God and saying, okay, God, I'm, because we were, we're on the brink of divorce, there was just so much junk in our marriage, and just everything was so bad. I go and get saved, and I'm completely in love with God. Mm -hmm. Like, I quit doing everything. I mean, I was just me and God and my child, and we were go walking to church. You were still in that life of of drugs and drinking and, and just everything. You were still there, still stuck in there that place. And then when you got saved, and at that point when you were still there, I mean, I was ready to leave you even more because— now I wasn't so in love with God. I didn't even care what you were doing, you know? <laughs> and so I remember uh, then you went and got saved. And then when you got saved, I, I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, thank you for saving his life because now my daughter is going to have a good father. I, th I, I was so thankful for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I gave the Lord my plan. I said, okay, he's saved, I'm saved. We'll get divorced mm -hmm. and you can, can, you know, we'll just co-parent. That was my plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my plan. Mm -hmm. We sat down, we talked about my plan and you had a different outlook on it. You said, you said to me, well, how about, and you, you, you say, cause you, you say a lot better. <laughs> you always say it was the smartest thing I did. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I told you, you know, I love God. I said, and you love God. I mean, we had that agreement. We did. We, we did. Knew that, that was, that we was knew true. We knew that we both love God. Our, our lives were showing it. We had fruit that showed, hey, all right, we really are committed. And so I told you, well, I love God. You love God. I said, maybe if we'll just continue to love yes, God. Yes, yes. 
we'll find our love again. Yes. And, and that's exactly what happened. But it came through yeah. us receiving a new beginning yes. from the Lord getting saved. But it also took you and I giving each other second chances. Yes. Because we, we messed up constantly. Uh, we were, because remember, we're saved. We're, we've got this agreement with God now. We, we came into agreement with him now, you know, that we were going to try to love each other. Mm -hmm. And I remember just so many times, just a roller coaster. I think the first five years that we share, first five years that we got saved, mm -hmm. it was a roller coaster of emotions. It was, it was, but I didn't want to be in this marriage. I didn't want to be with you. And yet I loved God and, and you weren't abusive to me. You weren't um, in a place to where you were hurting me or anything like that. It was just my love had grown cold. My heart became, had become callous to yeah. anything. To, so it was like I would try and then I would. It was just a constant, constantly forgiving and you constantly forgiving me, bringing up the past, just so much junk. And I remember one of those days and I would think I was pregnant with uh, my third one. I think I was pregnant with our third baby and because uh, we had him so quick right after we got saved. And I remember walking into the room and I was crying to the Lord <laughs> and I was went into my room and shut the door and to tell God on Joshua Bulger. Mm. I sat on that bed and I began to cry out and I told God, well, he does this and he does this and you need to change him in this. And you need I just gave him my spiel. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit, I could feel the Holy Spirit just walk in the room. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden that comforter was there. And I knew that that comforter was going to tell me something good. Mm. And he said to me, and I listened, and he said to me, Eliana, he said, quit praying God change Josh. And I was like, okay, you're going to give me the real prayer. <laughs> you're going to give me the prayer to say. You're going to give me the prayer to say that magic prayer. And he said, Eliana, you start praying God change me. Mm -hmm. And man, I, I remember that. And I remember feeling, going, okay, okay, I could do that. And you yeah. came home. And I told you what the Holy Spirit told me. I didn't keep it to myself. I told you what the Holy Spirit told me. And we began to do that. We began to say, Lord, Lord, change me. Yeah. Let me have a new beginning. Let me have a, a second chance with him, you know. And we began to do that. And then the next thing you know, it's like, what problems? Mm -hmm. You know, who was that before? Mm -hmm. It's now we've been married 34 years now, going on 35. And God did that. Mm -hmm. God restored our marriage. He restored everything but not only for us, because you talked in that one of the earlier episodes that disobedience and not giving other people chances or or, or um, not forgiving it causes it costs not only you but it costs others. Oh, absolutely! And it would have cost our children. Oh, we wouldn't have. Yeah, uh, it would have cost our children. We would have been divorced. Who knows what our children? How our children would have ended up? But because we gave each other a second chance, because we let God come in and change us. We have three wonderful kids. You know, they all love the Lord. They all serve God. They've never known a day without him. And that's all to the glory of yeah. God. Well, you know, and you might be asking right now, well, where, how did you guys find that place? It was the word of yes. God. And yes. It was us going to the word. It was us being in a local church and being taught the Bible. You know what I'm that's saying? Right. Readers Digest stories, but the Bible. And it was in the word of God that we found that the the how we forgive others is how we can expect to be forgiven yes. by God. You yes. know, how we treat others is how we can expect to be treated. You know, and the Bible taught us how to how to deal with each other when when we were having good days and bad days. And the, the scripture that comes to my mind, and I want you to write this down, is Galatians chapter six, verse one and two. I'm telling you, the apostle Paul just hit the nail on the head with this. This is just such a good word. He says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, mm, that means you that are in the word, amen? It's those of you that have the word. God's word is spirit. God's word's what make, makes us spiritual. He says, you which are spiritual, restore such as one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Mm. What was the mm -hmm. law of Christ? Love others the way that I have That's loved right. you. That's right. And his love for us is unconditional. 
God has given us so many opportunities to do right and we have failed. Mm. God's given us opportunities to do right and we did right. Mm -hmm. But God always provides an opportunity. Um, but, you know, one thing that I want to say is, but what, what do you tell someone? We talked about, you know, setting boundaries in some situations, you know, um, when it comes to if, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, you you have things that are being done to you by somebody. God mm -hmm. doesn't want you to be a doormat, but God wants you in a position to where you're you're leaving room for him to be able to work, you know. But what would you tell someone maybe that's in an abusive relationship? Mm -hmm. Let's say that the sin that they're dealing with is abuse, whether it's uh, mm -hmm. physical, verbal, uh, uh, sexual. What would you tell someone that that may be watching or knows somebody that's in that kind of a position? Maybe they're a believer mm -hmm. and these things are happening. What do you do when you're in that kind of a situation? Because Jesus told uh, Peter, you got to forgive, mm -hmm. you know, seven times. Yes, 70. absolutely. But absolutely. what would you tell somebody? How does that apply in this kind of capacity where there's abuse. Well, we're harm. we're talking about second chances and we're talking about us extending second chances and us be believing for second chances. When somebody is in an abusive relationship, you need to get out of that relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we're not saying divorce or anything like that. Get out of the relationship that is causing you harm. Get out of the relationship that is become separate from the relationship that is causing you harm. Forgive the person Believe that they can have a second chance and wait until God says, you know what, they've repented. They wait until that that whatever they've been doing is 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 gone. And you know, and if it's an illegal thing or something like that, that's where you really gotta pray about the Holy Spirit. Pray with God, because every situation is different. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's one thing to forgive somebody for something. And then it, if especially if it involves a child, for you to put yourself back in that situation with the same children. Mm -hmm. I mean that 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 you you have to pray and you know that doesn't mean you don't extend forgiveness and grace and mercy but you don't put yourself back in that situation. It's called wisdom. Yes. You know, there, uh, you know um, wisdom. You know tells you things. You know uh, that if you boil water, you know, and you put your hand in it, you're going to get burned. Yes. You know you don't need the Bible to tell you that. You have wisdom that mm -hmm. tells you that. When it comes to relationships that are abusive. Um, you know, just to clarify, um, we're not saying sever every relationship, but what we're saying is that you don't have to stay in an abusive home, amen, while you're working on your marriage. This is a hot topic, amen? Yeah. We're going to get right back to this right after this break. Thank you for watching Kingdom Concepts. Catch new episodes every Friday at 5.30 Eastern Daylight Time, 2.30 Pacific Daylight Time. Get connected with us. Follow, like, and subscribe on all of our social media platforms. We invite you to our local church, West Coast Believer Center International in Visalia, California. Come and join us in person, and you're also welcome to join us online. For location, place, and time, please visit wcbci.org. To access all the avenues that JVM has in order to be a blessing to you, please scan the QR code on your screen now. For more information, please visit joshuabulgerministries.org. Now, back to our show. Welcome back, everyone. You know, this is such a hot topic, you know, and when it comes to what we were discussing before the break, as mm -hmm. far as when you have some situations that, you know, every situation, if someone's wronged you or is yes. in the wrong, yeah. you know, every one of us, we're to love the way that Christ loves, mm -hmm. you know, he forgave us for everything. And he says that the way that he loves us, we're supposed to love others. And, and he says it's by that love and mm -hmm. how we treat each other. He says, men will know that you're my disciples mm -hmm. when they see the love yes. that you have for one another. Um, but what about situations that are that are complicated? They still merit forgiveness, but but what do you do if um, the situation yes. in your yes. home or, or you have Absolutely. family involved? Or what There's so many different There's dynamics. So many dynamics. Yeah. so many different dynamics. The point is forgiveness. You know, you forgive, you allow the person to repent. But that doesn't mean that you stay in that situation. You you could never go back to that situation if it merits that. Between you and God, that's what that's what you're going to find out. So you cannot stay in a situation where you have been violated. You have your children have been violated and say that's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Your children can continue to be violated. You could continue to be violated. 
forgive the person, separate yourself and let it go. You know, again, I'm not advocating for divorce, you know, anything like that, but there's people, plenty of people that forgive, forget, and go on to lead other lives, get remarried, and have great relationships. That means they've, they've already extended the forgiveness. They've already extended, you know, the love, the grace, the mercy. But you keep going. You don't stay in that. Yeah, you have to move on yes. and, and move forward. And God's so gracious. They help us every step of the way. Yes. You know, I, I love what the Bible says in Colossians 3.13. It says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any... Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Mm. Now he's telling us, you know, we need to we we need to bear with one another. Yes. Because we've all we've all we've all failed. We all know what it feels like to blow it. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, um, like what we read over in Galatians chapter six, you know, verse mm -hmm. one and two earlier, he says that you know we're supposed to uh, help people. Those of you that are spiritual, restore, mm -hmm. you know, within the spirit of meekness. What he's saying is that when it comes to you restoring others that have stumbled, others that have fallen, he says, man, you need to, you need to have that spirit of, of gentleness. He, he's not saying, you know, uh, treat it with kid gloves. But what he's saying is, hey, remember when you needed this. Yes, yes. Remember how you felt when you mm -hmm. needed a second chance and you didn't know if you were going to get one. Remember that when you're helping correct others, remember somebody extended Mm. some grace mercy and yes yes they you. did yes they did i always remember that i always remember just the grace and mercy that god gave me and when i do it helps me to be gracious to others it helps me to forgive them forget what they did and move forward um i really really work on doing that because if not i mean i can get stuck in unforgiveness i can get stuck in and bitterness, oh man, bitterness, it stoops the soul, you know, bitterness eats away at the bones, I mean, bitterness <laughs> just makes you, where I remember this lady, I used to go all the time at, to this grocery store, and every time I would walk in and see her, it's just like, you could see bitter, this is like, she, she would say hi to me and smile, but you just saw it all over her, and her countenance, and the wrinkles, just every young, very young woman, but you just saw bitterness on her, and you knew in your spirit, she just thinks she's just got bitterness. How many times did somebody wrong her? When did she decide, oh no, not to date, you know? Mm -hmm. And it just, it cost her. It can, you know, it's uh, unforgiveness. I mean, that was my Goliath. Yes. You know, learning to forgive people because you, you, for me, I kept, I kept my anger alive. Mm -hmm by rehearsing what yes, they did, you did over and over again. And so how do you know when you've really come to a place to where you're forg forgiving like God forgives? You know, how do you know when you've, when you've arrived at a place to where you're not working on forgiving people, you've entered into that place mm -hmm. where, you know, uh, it, it, you're, you're doing it right. Yes. I know for myself what God taught me was before when I struggled with forgiveness, when someone's name was mentioned, immediately the first thing I would do is think about what they did wrong to me, mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. When I allowed God to come in and take over and give me that new heart and a new spirit and a new love for people and a compassion you know, uh, for people, the same that I wanted for myself, it was me coming to a place when those same people that had hurt me when they were mentioned and the first thing I thought of wasn't about mm. the wrong, it was about the love that I had for them. Yes. And that's a beautiful thing because only God can put mm -hmm. that kind of love back in when, when you've been hurt to, yeah. to a strong degree well, like that. Well, let's face it. Sometimes, you know, and it's just me being honest. Sometimes you, when I, for me, the same thing, when you forgive somebody and their name comes back up and I don't think about the thing that they did wrong to me, mm -hmm. Um, I don't think, I, I know I've forgiven them, but sometimes I know I've forgiven them and that grace and love that I'm supposed to feel towards them is not there yet mm -hmm. because forgiveness is a choice. It's not a feeling. It's not a feeling. Nobody feels So I, 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 there's been plenty of times <laughs> that I've forgiven and I've chosen to forgive mm -hmm. and the feelings come later, Amen. you know? It's, it's a choice and, mm -hmm. you know, when it, when it comes to second chances, when it comes to new beginnings 
again, remember, you reap what you sow. And it's such a beautiful thing when you're when you're in a position to extend to somebody an opportunity to do that same thing, but to do it right, mm. you know. And even when it comes to ourselves, because sometimes, man, we have no problem giving other people second chances. But, man, we beat ourselves up yes. to where it's like it's always beyond our reach, mm -hmm. you know. And God doesn't want us living like that either. No, he doesn't. You know, he wants us in a place to where, you know, the Bible says examine yourself, mm -hmm. you know. And that's the thing is that you have to look at your life. You take what we've been talking about and you have to find where does this apply? What, what, how, how do I take, uh, you know, um, these things that are being shared with me today? How do, how do they apply to my life? And, you know, one way is through encouraging, amen, um, yourself, you know, Encourage it's just you reflecting, yes. it's you reflecting on your life and you reflecting upon the areas in your life where you need mm -hmm. God's renewal. That's right. You know, That's right. It's, it's not you avoiding those areas, but it's you approaching those areas where you know this needs to change and you stepping to it, amen, with a positive attitude, knowing, mm. man, God has changed other areas of my life, and this is a, this area is no different. Mm. Jesus amen. will be king. That's right. <laughs> you know, over this That's area right. of my life. That's right. You know, but what other areas would you say when it comes to, uh, you know, applying this to your life, you know, second chances and uh, forgiving people? Um, what other areas would you say, how, how would you apply this, you know, to your life? I think it, I think it has to do in every area. Any area that that the Holy Spirit is asking you to change, any area that the Holy Spirit is bringing to you so that you could change, so that you could, um, you know, be better. And I know sometimes we've done it wrong for so long. Is you just give up? It, it, you just give up and say, you know what? I'm just never going to be able to do this. I'm just never going to be able to. Uh, um, do this or whatever it may be. I'm never going to be able to, um, you know, fix my marriage. I'm never going to be able to uh, have a better relationship with my children. I'm never going to be able to have a better relationship, you know, with my parents. People just give up and settle for, well, I love them and, and they love me and they settle for not having that second chance for themselves and giving a second chance for others. You know, I feel like it really starts with giving yourself a second chance, saying, you know what, I messed up in this area. You know, I wasn't being kind or I'm not being forgiving or I'm not being, I don't have the grace and mercy that I need to have. But saying, you know what, Lord, help me to have those things and extending those second chances to people. And you don't have to go up to somebody and say, hey, I'm giving you a second chance. No, it's just you knowing right. that sometimes that person doesn't even know they needed one, you yeah. know? I just love that. Sometimes people, oh, you know what? I didn't or used to really like you, but now I like you. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you for sharing that part with me. Right. You could have you yeah, just- Yeah, my whole life without hearing that. that. You know? So it's not about you going, hey, I'm gonna give you a second chance. It's no, it says you know it in yourself. You know what? That person's not easy to love, but you know what? I, I'm going to do something different. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's it, as Christians, you know, I think that we need to inspire a culture within our congregations, within our church families. We need to we need to uh, inspire a culture of grace and forgiveness, you know, to where people see us demonstrate not so mm -hmm. much them hearing the pastor get up and preach on forgiveness but people seeing how we offer it to one another. That's right. It's it's them knowing that there's grace found in God, but there's also mm -hmm. grace found in his body. Yes. You know, to where yes, we, yes, can yes. All, we can all forgive. We can all move, move forward. You know, because some of the greatest testimonies that I've seen when it comes to this area of forgiveness, especially being a pastor, is that we've dealt with so many things as pastors. People have no idea what pastors handle. But where we have seen people that have been wronged and we've watched God heal them. We've got watched God restore them. And then we've seen God even get a hold of the people that did the wrong. Yes. The people that were uh, yes. a part of their sin, people that yeah. were maybe their abusers, you know, one way or the other, we've watched God, his grace and mercy go so far as to where you think about how many people we know that, God did such a work inside of them. They can still, they can attend a church where, you know, their ex-husband or ex-wife is know. there, you know, and they love each other. You know what I'm saying? That, 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 you know, it's not, it's not awkward. It's not like tense. It's not worldly. It's like, 
they receive forgiveness and the, uh, the new life and they're going forward. You know, what a blessing when you can see people that have been willing to forgive sometimes things that people might say that's mm -hmm. unforgivable, mm -hmm. you know, but with God, you know, his mercies yes. endure forever. Amen. I mean, it's such a big it's subject. A, you know, it is such a big subject. I know we touched on a lot of heavy things. You know what? In everything, use wisdom. And in everything, you know, you pray, you seek counsel. Go to people. Go to your elder in your church. Go to your pastor. Find a counselor, you know, that will help you um, sift through all your feelings and emotions. Amen. And, and it, it, it will just help you so much. Find somebody you can trust that will give you godly advice. Amen. Amen. And keep your heart open. Amen. Uh, you know, to forgiving the way that God has forgiven Amen. you. Be open to, to God, amen, in his second chances, amen. Praise God. I, I just thoroughly enjoyed this, amen. If you've enjoyed this program, amen, please let us know, amen. We're so honored to have yes, you be yes. a part of our audience, and we want to continue to invest in you. And if you would like, we would love for you to prayerfully consider partnering with Joshua Bolger Ministries. Help us to take Amen. This program around the world Amen. into the homes and families and the people that desperately need it. Amen. God bless you. We love you. And we pray that you have a wonderful day. We'll see you again on another episode of Kingdom Concepts. training you to be a victim when God has equipped you with this armor and your strength is from the Lord how I many know it's his power amen that's energizing that armor armor that was designed for you to be able to take a hit church engage your enemy you need to let the devil know man you hit the wrong family man you don't man you must not lost your mind you came to the wrong house amen I'm not that person you thought I was amen I'm no longer the person I used to be amen you have to rise up amen in the power of his might amen knowing I am armed for battle man I am dressed to kill devil I'm, I'm, I'm empowered with armor from on high when you take your place child of God and that devil's thrown everything at you that he can and you're still standing there in your faith, having done all the stand. He's hit you repeatedly, and you're still standing. Come on, you're not down. You haven't run away. You're still standing. When you come to that place and the devil's thrown everything he can at you, let me tell you something. There's an anointing that gets provoked in your life because you've learned how to endure like a good soldier.